Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the hepatobiliary triangle. This is a very important area just underneath the liver near the potohepatis that is very important for the surgeons because this area is explored in cholecystectomy, the surgery of the gallbladder. Now the anatomy of this area is quite obscure and it's quite variable. So the surgeons need to have precise knowledge of the structures in this area to carry out a successful operation. Now here in this picture we can see the area that we are mainly concerned with. So this is the area where the hepatobiliary triangle is located. So this is the triangular area where the hepatobiliary triangle is located. Now if we take a simple and a hand-drawn diagram then we can have a better understanding of the anatomy of this area. So this is a hand-drawn diagram taken from one of the reputed surgical anatomy books. So here we have the liver and just coming out of the liver near the potohepatis is the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct. Now mind you, we have taken some artistic liberty. So we have drawn it in a simplified way. So you don't actually see a picture like this in the human cadaver. But this diagram is drawn to explain things to you in a better way. So here we have the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct coming and meeting which they meet in the porta hepatis and they form the common hepatic duct. This duct over here. Now this common hepatic duct is joined by the cystic duct, the tube that joins the gallbladder to the common hepatic duct or the extra hepatic biliary tree. So after the common hepatic duct is joined by the cystic duct, it continues downwards as the common bile duct which opens into the duodenum. In this diagram we can also see the right hepatic artery and the left hepatic artery bifurcating from the hepatic artery proper. These two are the terminal branches of the hepatic artery proper and they go to the liver. Coming out of the right hepatic artery, we have the cystic artery that goes parallel to the upper border of the cystic duct and, and then it divides around the neck area of the gallbladder into two branches and they supply both the surfaces of the gallbladder. Now let us talk a little bit about the history. In the year 1891, a Frenchman named John Francois Callot described a triangular area in this location where the triangle which was an isosceles triangle had sides formed by the common hepatic duct, the cystic duct and the cystic artery. Now this is a small area, triangular area that was described by Callot. Now the same triangular area got enlarged over the years and finally the cystic artery was replaced by the inferior surface of the border. Now we are talking about a bigger triangular area which is called the hepatobiliary triangle or the cystohepatic triangle as mentioned in many books. Now this triangular area is often referred to as the Callus triangle in the modern literature. But if we look at the history of the area then the Callus triangle which was originally described by John Francois Callot is actually this little area this little triangular area which has got common hepatic duct, cystic duct and the cystic artery as the triangle. But the students can use the modern terminology and can define the hepatobiliary triangle as the callus triangle with the cystic artery being replaced by the inferior border of the liver. So the hepatobiliary triangle, cystohepatic triangle or the callus triangle as it is called nowadays can be defined as a triangular area which has got the common hepatic duct, the cystic duct and the inferior surface of the liver as the sides of the triangular area. The common hepatic duct is present on the left side, the cystic duct is present on the right side and the inferior surface of the liver is present superiorly. So the common hepatic duct will be present on the left side the cystic duct will be present on the right side and the inferior border of the liver will be present on superiorly. So this is the Callot's triangle or the hepatobiliary triangle. Now this area is very important because this area gets explored by the surgeons to identify these important structures. Structures such as the cystic duct, cystic artery, sometimes right hepatic artery can also be present in this area and the common hepatic duct. All these structures are very vital and they need to be identified and ligated before they are dissected. So 
this anatomy is very important for the surgical point from the surgical point of view i'll i'll try to draw a very simplified diagram so that it helps you understand so this is the liver a very simple liver so this is the liver coming out of the liver are the right and the left hepatic duct so this is the right hepatic duct this is the left hepatic duct they will come and form the common hepatic duct from the common hepatic duct we will have the cystic duct and this cystic duct will go and it will supply the liver like this so this is the cystic duct and it will continue the gallbladder then it will come down and it will meet the common hepatic duct and it will form the common bile duct just by the side of it will be the right hepatic artery the left hepatic artery they will be bifurcating from the hepatic artery proper coming out of the right hepatic artery we will have the cystic artery which will go parallel to the cystic duct then near the neck of the gallbladder it will divide into two branches and it will supply the two surfaces of the gallbladder and they might have anastomosis around the fundus also so this is the basic anatomy now Callet, John Francois Callet, he defined this triangular area as the Callet's triangle. Cystic artery, common hepatic duct, cystic duct. But nowadays, we defined this area as the hepatobiliary triangle or sister hepatic triangle or we simply call it the callus triangle where we have the common hepatic duct on the left side where we have the common hepatic duct on the left side the cystic duct on the right side and the liver superiorly so we have a triangular area which is bounded superiorly by the liver on the left side by the common hepatic duct and on the right side by the cystic duct. The triangular area is bridged by the double layer of peritoneum that forms the mesentery of the cystic duct. So there will be a double layer of peritoneum. So there will be a double layer of peritoneum in this area that will be bridging this area and it will form the mesentery of the cystic duct. The contents of this triangle will be present between the two layers of the peritoneum. So, the contents are, it has got variable amount of fatty connective tissue between the two layers of the peritoneum. Then the important context, contents will be the cystic artery which will be going in this manner. Then there will be a lot of lymphatics that will be present in this area and there will be a lymph node this is called a cystic lymph node so lymph node will be present roughly around this area then we have got autonomic nerves that will be traversing through this area and there may also be sometimes an accessory bile duct which may be present many a times a surgeon or a anatomist while doing dissection in this area may also see a portion of the hepatic right hepatic artery may be present in this zone Sometimes the hepatic artery may just take a turn and a hump may be formed in this area. The other important structure that lies in the vicinity of the callus triangle is the common hepatic duct which after meeting the, I am using a different color here, so the common hepatic duct after it meets with the cystic duct continues downwards as the common bile duct like this. So this is the cystic duct 
So this is the cystic duct. It comes and meets the common hepatic duct and it continues down as the common bile duct. Now the common bile duct needs to be differentiated from the cystic duct. And one way to do so is to look for the presence of a venous plexus on the wall of the common bile duct. Many authors say that there is a presence of a venous plexus on the wall of the common bile duct, which is absent in case of cystic duct. So, by looking for the venous plexus, which is also called the epicolodocal venous plexus, one can differentiate between the common bile duct and the cystic duct. Now, since the cystic artery and the cystic duct are present quite close to one another, it becomes a problem for the surgeons to differentiate between the two. The surgeon can remember two important factors. Number one, that the cystic artery will have visible pulsation which will make it easier for the surgeon to differentiate it from the cystic duct which will not have any pulsations. Moreover, the diameter of the cystic artery is 0.3 cm. So any structure which has got a diameter of more than 0.3 cm cannot be a cystic artery. So by remembering these points, we can easily differentiate between the cystic artery and the cystic duct. Now, having said that, it is easier said than done. Many a times, the anatomy of this area is very obscure and most of the times, the patient has already been suffering from chronic cholecystitis or acute cholecystitis. As a result of these inflammations, the area has got a lot of adhesions and as a result, the anatomy is quite obscure. In such a scenario where the anatomical structures are not easily identifiable to the surgeon, then the surgeon can go and look for the fundus of the gallbladder directly. The other important structure that is present within the callus triangle is the cystic lymph node. Now for the undergraduate students, it is important that they know the boundary of the callus triangle along with the contents and they should also understand where the callus triangle is present and how the structures are passing through the callus triangle. The undergraduate student can expect a lot of questions from this portion in the viva as well as in the theory and also this topic is very important for the postgraduate examination. Now that brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope that I have been able to clarify the structures and the arrangement of the structures within the callus triangle. So if you like my presentation then please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.